Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Happy as Hell podcast. We are getting closer to the end of season two. This is episode 22, and today we're talking about the new year. And is anything really ever new? Interesting inquiries coming up. Talk to you soon. One does not need to learn what one already is, only unlearn what one thinks they are. There is no way to happiness, none whatsoever. In searching for it, you will destroy its beauty. One does not become happy, one is happy. Ask what is fear, observe without judgment, and you have opened the door to compassion, which is the only form of intelligence and once you have seen it you cannot unsee it so can you end it your conditioned mind end it here we are talking about another end of year or if you're listening to this after the new year's it'll be a new year already is it a new year I've always wondered what we meant by new and why all these wild celebrations happen at the end of the year. I never really understood this. Why do we excessively celebrate when the new year comes or on New Year's Eve? Do we celebrate the end of the old year passing in order to forget something perhaps? Perhaps it was a tough year. And it was for many, it seems. Pandemic, stress of work, stress of running a home, paying bills, the anxiety of worrying about our jobs, or of our kids, or perhaps our health. And is that why so many people get drunk at the end of the year? I've never really understood it, except to feel that It seems, when I observe this, that it's escaping some kind of reality that that we live in. At least for a little while over the New Year's, while we have a little break from things. Which is another question we could ask, is why do we have a break? Why do we have that downtime to refresh ourselves? Is life so tough? Or for many of us, perhaps we feel that The new year brings some kind of miracle. A way to forget everything and hope that it all disappears and that the new year, everything can be wonderful and everyone can be happy and we have peace on earth thanks to some perhaps greater force or belief in a greater power. And you may ask, what's wrong with that? No, no, nothing. Nothing's wrong with it at all. But my question is, year after year, we seem to go through a similar routine. My question is, why do we put up with it? Please, please consider what it is I just said. Put up with. Which means to continue to accept unpleasant situations or experiences. And then year after year, we continue to experience the threat of war, or or war itself, the continued stress of our jobs, the stress of making enough money to survive. We have numerous anxieties about the future. We think about, will AI take over my work? What should the kids study in the future, if that's the case? Are they getting high enough grades? We continue to live in all kinds of fear. We continue to hope in something. We continue to experience despair. Why don't we do anything serious about all this? Why are we accepting all this year after year? And then we endure 
you know, each year we can do something new. Yes, sure, there's little bits of happiness and pleasure along the way. But why aren't we fundamentally changing the way humankind live? Is it as simple as making a list of uh, what they call resolutions and hoping by doing these things you'll have a sense of achievement or accomplishing something important? I want to lose 10 kilos. I want to jog every day. I want to travel to 10 different countries. I want to buy my dream car. I want to have my dream job. There seems to be a lot of eyes in New Year's resolutions. Isn't that list year after year primarily usually only about myself? Is that the most important fundamental goal self-satisfaction or are you genuinely concerned and genuinely actually concerned about the state of the world you live in and your relationship to it if your fundamental concern or goal is really only about yourself in this list of resolutions. There's nothing wrong with this, by the way. But are you escaping from this fact or are you admitting this is actually true? Why would you admit it? Doesn't it make you feel some kind of shame? But why judge it as wrong at all if this list is only about yourself? Isn't it just a simple fact to state something as it is i wonder where this judgment shame these premeditated concepts come from it'll be something we can talk about deeper in the next episode but i want to go back to the resolutions does your list of resolutions maybe contain something genuinely kind to help others do something for others but question this is it really genuine out of concern or out of reasons for self-interest again in other words are you seeking some sort of satisfaction for yourself by helping others and so comes another end of the year same rituals same traditions in some cultures and countries, people go out again and get drunk and repeat the same pattern as the year before. In other cultures, such as in Asia or here in Japan, they have an end-of-year cleaning ritual where they spend a couple of days before the end of the year cleaning the entire house, top to bottom, inside out. They clean windows and floors and doors mats, curtains, refrigerators, ovens, fans, bathrooms. There's a lot of uh, that type of cleaning that goes on. And there's a lot of symbolism involved with this since it implies that we want to start the new year with a fresh, clean, clear sense of everything so that everything is in order. And the house is orderly. But this too is just another habit, a tradition that gets repeated every single year. And there's always a couple of days where people spend a lot of energy, a lot of time doing this. I wonder why we don't spend the same time and dedication that we spend cleaning or that we spend dancing or going out getting drunk. I wonder why we don't spend that time to do this kind of cleansing in our own minds. To make our own minds 
completely clean, still, so that we too have a mind that is in order. Not a mind that is always living in conflict, trying to solve things, trying to achieve things, always trying to do, always taking some action, always moving, always on, always battling with everyday things that we need to do. And then we wonder why the world never changes. You see, the fact that rituals occur for the end of the new year or the start of the new year is seen across the entire world in many different ways. There are people who celebrate the new year through, they pray to some god or they go to a shrine to wish that the gods can help them have a wonderful year ahead or whatever it is. The rituals themselves might be different across the countries But it's, you know, it's the same human mindset. We seem to get to the end of every year and we start the new year with some kind of hopeful refresh. So, if we want to understand how to make a new start rather than repeating the same new start that we did last year, right, could I kindly make a suggestion? for people, if you're interested, and if you don't mind. May I suggest one book? Now, I don't read many books at all these days. I try not to read books to protect my own mind. But if I may suggest one book on selfless leadership by Katrine von Aldhusden, or if it means anything to you, please revisit some of this podcast, especially the earlier episodes where we do the different deeper inquiries about many different things or share it out with people that you feel might need a new start with life. But if I can suggest those two things only, either one or, or even nothing, you don't have to do anything, but just can you be aware of your life without judgment can you be aware in the moment without expectations is it possible to be with somebody without letting your own biases and prejudices corrupt your thinking can you just be aware then there is a chance that you might be able to get insight about something, particularly how fragmented our minds are, how much fear plays part in everything we do during the year, how we live, how we act, how we contribute to society, how we are creating society itself, our behaviors, how we're modeling that for the next generation, why things don't change, what is our responsibility to all living organisms in this world. Perhaps by exploring a couple of these tools I've mentioned, we might see that there is an entirely different way of creating something that doesn't come from habits, that doesn't come from projecting in the future, that doesn't come from a wish list, that doesn't come from desire, that doesn't come from comparison or from expectations. That creation is never repeating itself. It is always new and always flowing with, with, what's the word, intensity, wondrous light, great energy. It's there. It's always there. But a mind that is fragmented, self-concerned, will spend a lifetime convincing itself it is good at moments or with certain people, 
it convinces itself it knows what love is, and it convinces itself that it's concerned for the whole world, whilst at the same time it creates all kind of clever escape mechanisms and havoc along the way and all these problems and everything else I've mentioned earlier exist. That fragmented mind, that mind can never know love and compassion. Let's go into that fragmentation and get closer to the meaning. What am I and get closer to compassion, not in a sense of cultivating it in any way. Compassion cannot be cultivated. Empathy cannot be cultivated. If you're cultivating it, it is coming from a center that is already conditioned and is convincing itself that it needs to do something in order to get over something, to run away from something. We're going to talk about this fragmented mind in episode 23. We'll talk about compassion and the sacred human in the final episode of the series. Thanks, everyone. This podcast is produced by the Silent Leadership Institute in Japan. To discover more insights, blogs, and online courses, please visit gchiminelli.com. If you feel this podcast will help others, Please help me share it to the world by giving it a rating or a review or sharing it on social media.